Hi, I'm Brett Lessinger, Beach Safety Division Chief for the City of Orange Beach. A rip current is going to be that deep channel of water. It occurs normally in the surf zone inside of the sandbar. They can range anywhere from 50 yards to 100 yards wide. Uh, essentially, it's going to be that deep channel of water that's rushing out to sea, so against the surf that's incoming. Rip currents can occur on any stretch of beach. Essentially, when waves come in and those waves try to channel and rush back out, they're going to find the lowest area or the path of least resistance. Once they find that path of least resistance, um, that water is going to start to rush out to sea. So any break in the sandbar or any deep trough inside of the sandbar is going to cause that rip current or the water flowing out to sea. So generally, we like to keep it short and sweet when we tell people how to uh, identify rip currents. Um, the number one way they can identify rip currents is just uh, that turbidity or churned up water. Um, you'll sometimes see the sand moving out away from the shoreline. That's a good way to identify rip currents. Also, if you see a smooth channel of water and breaking waves to the left or right, that's also a good way to identify a rip current. So if you find yourself caught in a rip current, the best line of action is going to be float on your back, uh, try and tread water for as long as possible. You wanna make yourself identifiable to the public or a lifeguard. So you'll wanna wave your hands, try and uh, call for help if you can. Uh, the rip current is gonna be pulling you away from shore. So the worst thing you can do is try and fight against that rip current. So again, try and sit on your back and relax. If you can wait for help, somebody will be able to dial 911 and we'll get emergency services there as quick as possible. So when a lifeguard identifies a swimmer in distress, they're gonna pick the rescue device um, that will uh, expedite their rescue as quickly as possible to get to the person. So swim fins or rescue board. Um, sometimes they'll use cannon fins as well. Uh, essentially, they will use the same rip current that pulled the person out to sea. That way they can get out there quickly. Once they make contact with the victim, they'll try and uh, make sure that they are floating, they're conscious and alert, and then they'll try and uh, pick a spot where the water's not flowing out to bring the person back to shore. So our baseline flag is the yellow flag. Yellow flag is gonna represent surf anywhere from one to three feet for us. Um, you can expect rip currents with yellow flags. They're just moderate strength rip currents. Um, we tell people to swim with caution with yellow flags. So it's based on their own swimming ability. If they're a good swimmer, maybe they'll be able to go a little bit further. If you're not a good swimmer, we suggest staying close to shore. Red flag days represent high hazard and high surf. Um, so these are gonna be our rougher days. We suggest knee deep water or closer to shore. If you're not a good swimmer, we suggest not entering the water at all. Um, so your surf is gonna be about three to four foot, potentially bigger. And the rip currents are gonna be a high strength on these red flag days. Double red flag days, the water is closed to the public. Um, so realistically, um, not even ankle deep water. So uh, wet sand is kind of our cutoff line for double red flag days. Um, it's just a safety concern. We have extreme hazards and extreme surf conditions. Uh, the last flag we have is purple flag, and that can fly in conjunction with the yellow flag or the red flag. Essentially, it represents marine pests are present in the water, and pests represent jellyfish, Portuguese man of war or stingrays. So 80% of all of our rescues or swimmer in distress calls are a direct result of rip currents. So we want people to be able to identify these rip currents so they can potentially avoid a dangerous situation. Um, rip currents can move at speeds of up to five miles an hour. It's very fast moving water. Even an Olympic swimmer would have a difficult time swimming against five miles an hour. Ultimately, we want everybody to enjoy their time when they're out on the beach. If you do see a swimmer that's in distress or having difficulties getting back to shore, we suggest calling 911 as soon as possible. Uh, that will expedite the lifeguards and emergency service being able to get there sooner. We do not suggest trying to enter the water yourself to try and rescue any victim or any person that's in distress. We hope to see everybody out on our beautiful beaches here in Orange Beach. And remember when you come out, talk to a lifeguard and check your beach flag conditions before entering the water.